Hey, welcome back. Okay, so um, we finished last session um, with uh, something was not working properly. Um, after we implemented uh, text entities. Uh, so basically here, uh, we call it terminal, the terminal when we should, when we were showing the text um, we were doing few things here so we were um, well this is <laughs> this is already including the fix so we were filling the screen completely with uh, a black tile so basically we were erasing the screen then we were you know because we remove everything we draw the frame we see uh, around uh, the the two two thirds of the screen the top two thirds of the screen um, then we select the font tiles we route the test write the test with this uh, it was you know we were talking about that pack routine where we encode the text using six bits instead of eight then we update the screen on the top which means that the last uh, third of the screen uh, is it's not updated so we still see uh, what we had already on the screen then we set the ties bar wait for 64 frames and and we you know it's done so we continue with the game but then we realized that when we were drawing the changes in the hub uh, when we were hit the energy bar was not going down as we expected um, and this is because well the top frame when we are rendering the map uh, basically instead of doing clipping because it's a little bit more expensive what i do is i draw uh, everything including the um some tiles that overlap that go over the frame but then because i update the buffer into screen skipping those uh tiles it basically looks fine you can't really tell that i'm um drawing more tiles that I shoot for the map so that I'm not doing clipping, right? Um, uh, so because checking if I'm drawing out of that area, it will be more expensive than just drawing on the, you know, putting that on the buffer, that information in the buffer, and then uh, just not drawing that into the screen is cheaper. Uh, but then it means that when I draw the hut here, um, yeah, I, I just, I don't know. Maybe we don't need to do this anyway. Hmm, let me think. Why is that? Let's take a look. So, uh, not completely sure actually why. Why, let me adjust this a little bit. So not completely sure why. There must be a reason. I don't remember right now. So let's take a look. So let's see um, here. So yeah, see, that's why. See this part here? This part here. This is because what I was what I was saying, um, I as part of doing the scroll, I overdraw and then when this is updated i don't want to do that i don't want to break that so instead what we do is we validate the screen which is basically telling my engine that whatever you have in the in the in the buffer is already on the screen although it's not true but it means that when we go here and we draw the hat you know we update the screen um everything in the buffer is valid so when we do the update the screen card, which is the bottom uh, third of the screen, um, it will only draw the stuff that has changed, the stuff that we have changed here, right? Which is correct, but then it's not correct when we, this is complicated to explain, but anyway. Uh, so, because we were, instead of erasing the top part of the screen, the two thirds of the top, we are erasing the complete screen. 
it means that although on the screen we could see the energy full in the buffer everything was black so when we were when we were hit by an enemy and we were drawing black on that area it was already black and because we invalidated the buffer we said that the you know we told the buffer oh you know whatever you have in the buffer is already in the screen it didn't draw that black so that's why we were seeing uh the energy bar when we were hit now the fix i have implemented here is basically i made a, a version of that field buffer um sorry field um yeah, fill, fill, fill the screen just to use the top. So now we can read the text and uh, what it's doing is basically is erasing only the top frame. So if I go here, if I get, get hit by an enemy, see the energy bar is, is erased just fine. So that's not a problem anymore, right? So that was the fix. Um, I did that off the off record because I don't know it was simple. I mean, I, I realized what was the problem when I when I was having that shower just after the session, so it was it was trivial to fix. Um, so that that's one thing. Now, what I want to do today is uh, I want to implement something to use um, a functionality that I call the game flags. What is the game flags? Well. At the moment, uh, here I have some functionality uh, to deal with, with persistence. So we know that our map allocates a number of bytes. Um, so we have some memory where we can track bits to know if basically one object is being collected or not. Right? So this is uh persistence is only being used by the pickups i think we implemented this in one session it's basically yes i think we have a session that i don't remember which is the number but in a previous session we we, we did this so basically when you collect one of these items uh, every single item has a unique id and we do this which is you know we set the persistence and what it does is here based on the ID we look what is the specific bit in our persistence uh, table and we set that to one toggle is just swapping from one to zero or from zero to one and check persistence will tell us if that bit is set now what I want to do today is I want to use that persistence as a flag so if we look at the current map, which is here, if we look at this map, let's make this smaller so you can see it. Um, yeah, so all right, we don't need that anyway. So if we look at this map, at the entities, um, so we have different entities here, which, which are pick are pickups. Although uh, I have them with a the different name here. So this is a key, there's a blaster here. Um, you know, there are a few of them. Um, in theory, there's no reason for this to be, to have multiple, you can have multiple blasters. Uh, it means that two blasters will have different ID. And when you collect one of them, you know, it will set that as a flag. But those flags, sorry, that persistent bit can be used as a flag. For example, I mean, potentially you could have a list of all the blasters and in the game, if you have a list of all the IDs, you could be checking those IDs, but that's not exactly what I want to do. What I want to do is, uh, I want to know, for example, uh, for the specific types that we have here, uh, we have defined them in uh, here, it is, yeah, so we have keys, med kits, oxygen, credentials, blasters, and a battery. So I think 
I mean, I'm still not sure because I'm, I'm just, this is just implementing the, the engine, but then what the game is going to do is still a little bit undefined. But I think I want some of these um, items to be unique. So there is only one blaster. So when you grab the blaster, you can fire. That is already implemented in a different way with a global variable. But I think we may convert that to the, to the flags, I think. Uh, oh well, I don't know. Hmm. I'm still not sure how to do this. So at the moment, um, if we look at the pickup, so with the keys, at the moment the key, we only have one type of key, which is, you know, it's a key card and it's green, but in theory, I can have doors with different colors and keys with different colors. That would be a nice thing, right? Although we have a limited amount of inventory slots, so it wouldn't be a little bit not very good. You know, if we have, for example, six different keys, and uh, actually I don't remember how many and um, how many slots do we have. But so it's two. Well, we can actually look at the code. Why not? Definitely the fine here, maybe. Okay, so we have seven inventory slots. So having six keys, <laughs> no, that's probably not a good idea. Although we don't have, do we have six colors to use? Probably we don't either anyway, but I'm not sure. I'm still thinking about that. At the moment, I went with the easiest way and um, we can use that. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, what I thought that we could be doing is um, we could have a list. So we can save the ID of the unique items, let's say, and then instead of checking for these, we could look at the function where we can tell if that bit is set in the persistent table, which is likely to be more expensive. And there are not that many, you know, at the moment we have key blaster. So, okay. I mean, keys, this is probably fix me. I'm not sure. I, I, I might just change the key to be green key. And then my hub blue key, you know, few other types of keys, maybe four different types of keys. Um, not sure. I don't want to do inventory management, so I don't want you to drop objects and collect them. Although, you know, we could be doing that, maybe. So, uh, so keys, blaster. Yeah, I, th I don't think we're going to do persistent for this. So we can have another one for, for the credentials, right? So these are initiated to probably, um, well, I mean, we know when we get the, the credentials, we should creds is going to be uh, one and then something like that. All right, let's do in the same order as the other one. Though I like it more like this. And if the compiler was really good <laughs> in If the compiler was really good, I shouldn't be doing this, but because calling to this function is kind of expensive because you need to pass parameters and stuff, and it's going to be the same. We can do this. Set the flag and then add item, which is probably slightly, um, maybe better, perhaps. 
Right, so we have the flag here set and keys, flaster, credentials. Um, now in main, somewhere, when we start the game, I set the variables. And at the moment, this is quite untidy. Oop, no, zero. So this is just basic stuff. Now, as you can see here, there's a lot of stuff that we see set to zero in here. And a lot of stuff here is part of, you know, the, 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 the variables are set here. So one thing we could be doing is if we group this together, the compiler will place them together in memory. And we could be using memset uh, to set that passing the uh, address of the first one, and then the, the number of bytes we want to set to zero, um, which is way more, more efficient than doing it like this. So we probably want to do that eventually. But for now, let's go like this. So we have that, we have credentials, blaster, right. Okay, so, and, and I think, well, we probably can compile, and see that everything is fine. And I don't think we're going to see any difference, really, because, I mean, it's just setting a flag. And, and actually, we don't have anything. So, it's setting the flag. Well, we're not going to say anything. Anyway, so we got the, cred the credentials. Um, so let's get this, which is what we are there, right? Yeah, okay. So right. So well, I mean, I was planning to do this in a slightly different way using the persistence, but I'm thinking that, um, for example, for the blaster can be a little bit expensive because checking for persistence this this is quite a lot of stuff to check because we have to get the address memory address of persistence then get the id made this uh, by shift which is multiplying by eight um, then and so it's quite a lot. You know, this is equivalent of Monigo. It's quite a lot of uh, work to check, and that will need to happen every time that here uh, in the player call it um, in the player update here. Every time we press fire, I mean now it's very easy. We check the blast. We check the blaster variable. And that's trivial. It's not expensive at all. But if we do the other thing, hmm, I don't know. It's less cleaner, but I think I'm going to leave it like this. Now, what can we use the credentials for? Well, we have, for example, here a terminal, right? And this probably needs a little bit of cleanup. Even if it's okay, so so term so we can have, for example, a function for access the night and then another. I use the underscore just to remember myself that this is a local function. I'm not going to post this anywhere else. So, uh, access term run maybe. So we run the terminal. Now all this stuff for now. Some of it. Um, for example, right. So 
that is going to I don't know because this is going to be common the thing is that putting this out of here and putting it in here when you start doing a lot of logic in a function SDCC may or may not do a good job <laughs> generating SAT so sometimes even if it's the same code and you have few branches it just wrapping in a function and having the overhead of making that call makes the code more efficient because the compiler generates better code so I'm not completely sure what I want to do here um, I think I don't know so so we have here what we're doing here right let's do it we can change our mind later why not so here we're going to get so we need to set you know we need in any case we have access or not we need to clean the, the screen roll the frame set the, the font and then ooh, this here is likely to be dependent of what we do right so because the pointer is not going to be set unless we have access and then okay so it creates then we call this function here otherwise well well i like it really the way but anyway otherwise term access denied right so we have access we show the text i mean this is just a placeholder right so so this is a placeholder we probably need to go down a little bit so this is common for them then we do the screen mm, 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 mm. i don't like that too much this has to be here because the logic when we run the, the terminal or not it's going to be different and this has to be here something like this then when we finish we rest we restore the tiles for you know the actual tiles of the game not the font tiles because this is, we need to select the font um, because otherwise we don't have enough uh, we don't have enough tiles in, in one byte index to have all the tiles set. I'm using plus the 64 characters of the font, so we need to swap them. Um, and here, if the access is denied, what we're going to do is for now, very similar, but we're going to say access denied. And it's going to be text pack. I think that's access deny, and it's going to be in red, right? And location is going to be something like y is going to be ten, and then we can do, for example, ooh, so we know is. 16 which is 32 center point is 16 minus line of access deny minus so it's nine so it's going to be nine nothing 10 where did I put the game over? So, um, so game over is eleven. Ooh, okay, no, it's eight. Sorry, eight. Right. So, and then in data in the text because we we packed the test. Oh, this is another change. I did this the other day. Um, because before uh this json object was just a list and and it was 
very annoying to use because it meant that I had to why is marking me that as a as red? All right. So it was very annoying to use because you had to count and you know, oh I want to get for example a space to start uh, zero one it was a pain in the ass. So I changed this. Now it's a dictionary and the key of the dictionary is uh, processed by uh, by the, the tool that does the packing and so let's rest execute this text pack text pack it's not that what I got okay so generate the texts so access the night what did I wrote here text pack access oh, oh because it didn't include the tests right so basically generates a define with a number <laughs> which is a silly thing but it makes everything easier uh, because I need to come so it generates a define with the key I use in the dictionary so if we run this now uh, let's see oh no wait oh yes update the screen and then we wait right so that's fine for now um, so basically we go here we try to oh, it didn't work excellent I like I like that why it didn't work hmm put term oh because it's not term it's just it's this one right yes yeah because remember that in the term text pack guess the it unpacks from a pointer we pass and that pointer is associated to the text entity and in this case it's not this is a stock test that we have with the other text that we uh, is not part of the entity so this is available every every all the time not just in that map so that's why I was unpacking the wrong thing. So access the night, which is enough, I guess. And well, I don't know why I got the key. It's because the key doesn't help at all. Actually, we can actually test that. This is pure QI. Yeah, access the night. Is that completely center? Well, it should. And we're here. Doesn't look center because yeah, this is a test because now we have the access key. So let me see something because it doesn't look too center. Is it center? Yeah, it is. It looks unbalanced because this thing here. Yeah, because we did the right calculation. So so we know it's sixteen minus. The length of access. Oh no! It's because I did it wrong. That's why it doesn't look center. I need to add a zero. So I need to add a space here. Right, so to be nine. Okay. So if we go back to the text, uh, space here. And um, blah, 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 blah. we can do, for example, what we have here. Do we have blink or something like that? Oh, it's a blink. Is this an attribute that exists? Hmm, it doesn't know anything about that. All right, let me see. No, so I guess it's not ZX Blink. I don't remember. Uh, blink. Do we know anything about Blink? I don't have Blink. I can't believe that. Oh, it's called Flash. Oh my. So, Flash, there you are. So, oh. We were on that again. Slightly better, I guess. Oh, 
Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So that's one thing. Um, actually, we had the beeper here ready. So, so mm, 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 I don't have any song here. I mean, we need something like eh, but I don't have anything like that at the moment. So, do, 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 what can we do? Um, I guess. Nah, I need to generate one effect for that. I mean, we can put the placeholder. Like, for example, the beep. Oh. Uh, let's go back to the terminal. Like a beep. So, boom, 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 boom. but I don't remember what is the function. Uh, hmm, we can guess. So, screen top and then could be play something no or beep beeper beeper play maybe let's see ooh, ooh. Uh, let's go let's see beeper play oh but this is not helpful let's go back uh, Oh, doesn't know anything about this one. I need to fix what's going on with the tags because it's not really working. Uh, so beeper play and it's basically the effect. So fx beep. Alright, so that should beep. And uh, this 64 is probably too much for that. For that, actually, I'm not completely sure I enable because I have forgotten about that in the past. Oh, this time you can actually hear it, right? Good. So there should be a blip, although we will change that to be more like <laughs> more like an access than I kind of thing, right? Cool. I like it. So access and I. So basically, um, in order to to get to the terminals, you need the access access card here, which is you need credentials. And when you get that, you can get to this one, which is not saying at all. But we can, you know, this already has some nice stuff that we can do. For example, our credentials here. So, and, oh, hi. Oh, when it's uppercase, lowercase, it's going to be uppercase anyway. So, but, yes. So, yeah, I wrote that, oh, hi, uppercase, but it's not going to make any difference. Uh, because we don't have the uppercase case um, and um, the tool that does the conversion from the map is going to make that uppercase anyway so so basically uh, so we don't have access to that one that's correct let's go to the other one oh, we need the key by the way because I don't know why I don't put it, I'm putting things so far away when I'm doing testing so we don't have access to this one either, but when we have the credentials, oh hi, that works. And if we go to the other one, we see, oh no, I did the other one again. Let's go back and we when we go to the other one, uh, we should go, yeah, we get the other message. Right, so this is looking good. So which this is already enough to continue. We can go into, we're going to leave that new, uh, we're going to leave this new, I mean, this is just a testing map anyway, so it really doesn't matter. So yeah, access and I, and 
to local bits. So credentials. Cool. Excellent. So that is great. And I think this is this is going to be a short session because this is great. Um I think I'm going to stop here. Maybe we can add make no I want to make a small change to the terminal. And the change is going to be a really important one. Yeah, you can guess it's not important, but I would like to do that. So in here, yeah, we're going to use that one. So why is this? This is a way of generating the hat in a very simple way, which is basically saying uh, the coordinates and the tile I want to put. And then I have a, a loop here where I put the tiles. So what are we going to do here is we're going to copy this and uh, we're going to add one of those nice glass effects. After drawing the frame, for example, uh, because it's going to look more like a terminal, right? So it's going to be one one because remember we left. So there is the frame, and then we leave left uh, a black border around, and it's going to be according to this and my command. It's going to be one hundred ninety. And this is very important because it's going to look way nicer, like more like a. No, it didn't work at all. Why it didn't work? Hmm, interesting. One, one. So, so we raise the screen. Oh, no. I mean, where are we going? No, I mean, actually. This is this is actually just writing access denied. So hmm, should be fine. Is this using the regular tile set? I think it is. Yeah, I think it's using the regular tile set. It's not using anything weird. Hmm. So, one 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 hundred and ninety, which is the tile attribute, right? It's not. Let me see. No, this is the name of the tile attribute and the tile attribute table. So this is tile attribute, and then one hundred ninety. Right, and I mean, if we go to let's take a look to that. So, tile attribute doesn't know anything about this one again. This is not working right. This should be there anyway. So, generate the tiles. So, tiles attribute it basically. Is telling you, yeah, it's a map because you can have, see, for example, 32 per 8, and in this case, there are only 175 that are unique, so we don't duplicate the stuff. But in this map, it's telling me that the same tile can have different colors, basically. Um, so that's why we need that table. So now it should get the right tile with the right attributes. And it doesn't work. Why is it not working now? It's telling me that what? It's not. No, it's not. It's tiles. Oh, tile, tiles. Get wait for it. No, it's still not finding that tile. Hmm. Hmm. That's not good. I need to find out why that's not working. Maybe it's because it's code that I generate. 
maybe. So could it be that, but I still need to find out. I've been doing some tweaking and it's not quite right. Wow, look at that. That's really amazing now. It looks way better. <laughs> cool. So um, let's come with this. Uh, this is... Classify for the terminal. Nice. Okay, so I think this is done. Um, and we're going to keep it short. We, we're going to leave it here for today. Um, what is going to be next? Um, mm, 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 mm. Well, we need something for the terminal. I mean, when you have access to the terminal, um, so we have some text that uh, it's associated to the terminal um, to the ter terminal uh, entity, but how we display that text, I mean, it's up to us. So it could be, as I said in the previous session, um, I'm not completely sure. I mean, it could be an interface like uh, some sort of terminal where you can access to functionality. It could have a menu, so you could be reading emails, or or in this case, I mean, obviously. Um, we need to find a name for the owner of those credentials because when you use that card of those credentials you get to the terminal and you're going to be someone and you're going to read information about that someone and that information is going to be very useful because it's, that's probably what we're going to use to tell the story what's going on in the map in the game sorry not the map the game um, you know why you know, there are aliens and stuff and what you're supposed to do. So I think that's going to be very useful. It could be something like that. Um, so, I mean, it's important to think that we need, I need to remember. So basically, uh, the terminals will show information, but we need to implement some special terminals uh, or yes, I think it's going to be special terminals and those terminals, it could be only one, it could be more, are going to have a special flag um, that currently is supported already by uh, uh, by the map export. That is basically, I mean, it's a flag that we use to tell, for example, when, when an, an alien moves left to right or, you know, if he, which side is going to start or if he moves up and down. You know, it's just a flag. It's one one bit. That bit could be interesting to to say which terminal is different, and that terminal that is different could be like a key, for example. It could be used for a puzzle, which means that you need the credentials. You can, I mean, you can com complete the game without actually um, uh, accessing the terminals. Um, and it could be a fixed terminal or it could be a random terminal. I don't know yet. Um, there's another thing we could be doing is that um, one of the terminals could give you uh, information that changes on every game and that you will need to use to continue, for example, uh, like an access code, you know, four digits that you need to enter to enable something, maybe a lift. Um, so, you know, it's a little bit of forcing the, the user, the player, to uh, learn about the, the story, so read the story. And, uh, you know, it's just another element, another puzzle. I mean, all the puzzles I, I plan to implement are basically a key door type of puzzle. So you need something to use somewhere so you can continue. Uh, uh, and that's the basic idea. So I need I need to implement the terminals. At first, I think something that looks nice and is basically shows you the text and uh, you can see that as part of you know a journal. I don't know email system. You're accessing that a bulletin board system with this the credentials of this guy or this woman. I still don't know. Maybe it could be a doctor. Don't know. Anyway, so that's probably for a next for for a next session uh, or next session or maybe one after the next. I'm not completely sure. It depends. 
Um, okay, so that's all for today. Um, I hope you're enjoying those this uh, those videos. Uh, these videos. Uh, um, I'm having fun doing them. A little bit sometimes uh, it's a little bit slower, especially when I'm tired <laughs> explaining things instead of actually doing them uh, and then realizing the next day that it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, but yeah, um, I hope you're enjoying them anyway. Um, okay, so that's all for today. See you next time. Remember, you can subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And uh, if you want to tell me anything about these videos, any suggestions, any comments, you can leave a comment uh, um, in the video or you can contact me uh, using Twitter, for example. Uh, you can follow me, follow me there. My user is Raydark. Uh, which is the title of the of the videos I'm coding. Um, and see you next time. Bye.